Welcome back, let's start with this example. We have the sum from i equals one to nine of five. And so how would we go about finding the answer to this summation? Well, if we look at our summation formulas over here, we have four different formulas that we're going to want to know as we go through different examples. And it looks like our example problem here is going to line up with our first rule that when we have the sum starting at one to some upper bound n of a constant c, that will be equal to c, that constant, times n, our upper bound. And so in this case, our constant is five, and our upper bound is nine, and so the answer to this sum will be five times nine, right? Our constant times our upper bound. And so this will be equal to 45. And so that is the answer to that sum. And so then just to compare how we would have done this with each term individually, if we didn't know these formulas, this means that we're going to be adding five to itself nine times, right? This would be equal to five plus five plus five and so on until we get to our ninth five, right? And so nine fives together would be 45. Let's look at another example. Next, we have the summation from i equals one to 19 of four i. And so the first thing that you wanna do when you have a summation like this, where you have an i and it's being multiplied by some constant, you're going to wanna to pull that constant out. That's going to make it a lot easier to evaluate. So if we do that, this will be equal to four times the sum from i equals one to 19 of i. And so if we wanna find the answer to this sum, let's go over to our summation formulas over here and see which of them matches up with what we have right here. And it looks like the second one here is going to match up because we have the sum of just i to the first power, right? We have i to the first power. And so in order to find the sum here, we're gonna have four times this formula where n is equal to 19. And so this will be equal to four times 19 times 19 plus one divided by two. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to four times 19 times 20 divided by two. And notice that four divided by two is equal to two. So this would be equal to two times 19 times 20. And if we multiply all those terms together, this would be equal to 760. And that will be the answer to the sum for this problem. And so then once again, just so you can understand what we are finding the sum of, this notation means that for this term for i, starting with i equal to one, we are plugging in the numbers one to 19 into this term and adding them together. So the first couple terms would be four times one plus four times two, and then we would continue to add up all the way until four times 19. So that is what we found the sum of here, and it is 760. Let's look at another example. All right, so next we have the summation from one to seven of the quantity i cubed plus i squared. And so in order to solve this summation, the first thing that we're going to want to do is to split up these two terms. We're going to have two different summations here. And so what I mean is that this is going to be equal to the summation from i equals one to seven of i cubed plus the summation from i equals one to seven of i squared. So when you have a quantity like this that you are summing, you can split it up into two separate sums with the same bounds, right? We have the sum from one to seven for i cubed right here, and then the sum from one to seven for i squared right here. And so then, if we look at our summation formulas, we have the sum from one to some upper bound n for i squared and i cubed right down here that we can use for each of these summations. And so if we do that for both of these sums, n is going to be equal to seven, and so let's start with our sum for i cubed. This will be equal to seven squared times seven plus one squared divided by four, right? That is this formula right here applied to this sum. And then we'll use our i squared formula, which is right here, and we'll have plus seven times seven plus one times seven times two plus one divided by six. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to seven squared, which is 49, times seven plus one squared, which is eight squared, which would be 64. So we'll have 49 times 64 divided by four plus seven times eight, which is seven plus one right here. And then seven times two is 14 plus one is 15. So we'll have times 15 divided by six. And so this will be equal to 3,136 divided by four plus 840 divided by six, which is equal to 784 plus 140, which is equal to 924. And so that would be the answer to this sum.
Next, we have the sum from i equals 1 to 30 of i times the quantity i minus 3. And so the first thing we're going to want to do for this summation is to distribute this i to each part of this quantity. And so this will be equal to the summation from i equals 1 to 30 of i squared minus 3 times i, right? We distributed this i to each part by multiplying it. So we have i times i is i squared, and i times negative 3 is negative 3i. And so then we'll close that. And then the next thing that we're going to want to do is just like with the last example, split up these two terms so we have two different summations. And so this will be equal to the summation from i equals 1 to 30 of i squared minus the summation from i equals 1 to 30 of 3i, right? So we have the sum of i squared minus the sum of 3i. And so the next thing we can do is pull out this 3 to the outside of this sum. And so if I rewrite this, we'll have 3 times the sum of i from 1 to 30, right? You're always allowed to pull out a constant that is being multiplied by your i term. And so now we can look at what summation formulas are going to match up with what we have over here. We have i squared and i, and so we can find those formulas over here. And so here's our formula for i, and here's our formula for i squared. And so in both cases, n is going to be equal to 30. And so if we write those out, we'll have that this is going to be equal to 30 times 30 plus 1 times 2 times 30 plus 1 divided by 6 minus 3 times 30 times 30 plus 1 divided by 2. Right for our i squared term, we plugged 30 into this formula for n, and then we have 3 times this sum, which is this formula right here, where we plugged 30 in for n. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to 30 times 31 times 2 times 30, which is 60, plus 1. So you're going to have 61 divided by 6. And then minus 3 times 30 times 31 divided by 2. And so that will be equal to 56,730 divided by 6. And then minus 2,790 divided by 2. Right, and I got that by multiplying 3 by 30 by 31. That's where this number came from. And then if we continue our work up here, that will be equal to 9,455 minus 1,395. Right, this term comes from dividing this by 6, and this term comes from dividing this by 2. And so then this would be equal to 8,060. And that is the answer to this summation. Let's look at another example. All right, so next we have the summation from i equals 1 to 12 of the quantity i minus 1 squared. And so in order to solve this summation or to find its answer, we're going to have to square this quantity. We're going to have to expand this by multiplying i minus 1 by itself. And so if we do that up here, we'll have i minus 1 times i minus 1. And so we can FOIL these two terms or multiply them together, and we'll find that this will be equal to i times i, which is i squared, and then i times negative 1, so we'll have minus i, and then we'll have negative 1 times i, so we'll have another minus i, and then we have negative 1 times negative 1, which would be positive 1. And so we can rewrite this to be equal to i squared minus 2i plus 1. And so now that we have found what this is equal to when expanded, we can replace this for this quantity in our summation and rewrite it to have that this is equal to the summation from i equals 1 to 12 of i squared minus 2i plus 1. And so now the next thing that we're going to want to do, now that we have expanded this term, we're going to want to split this up into three different sums, a sum for each one of these terms. And so if we do that, this will be equal to the summation from i equals 1 to 12 of i squared minus the summation from i equals 1 to 12 of 2 times i, and then plus the summation from i equals 1 to 12 of 1. Right, so we split up this summation to have this sum from 1 to 12 for each of these terms. And so we can actually rewrite our middle term here by pulling out this constant multiple of 2. And so if we do that, we'll just have the sum of i, and that sum will be multiplied by 2. And so then if we match up each of these sums with their formulas, our first sum here is for i squared. So we'll use this formula where n is equal to 12. And we'll have that this is equal to 12 times 12 plus 1. 
times 2 times 12 plus 1 divided by 6. And then for our second term, we're going to have 2 times the sum of just i. So we're going to have minus 2 times this sum right here. We just have i to the first power and our n is still 12. So we're going to plug 12 in for n. And so we'll have 12 times 12 plus 1 divided by 2. And then for our last sum, this is a constant, right? There's no i in our term here. So that's going to correspond to this summation formula where we just multiply that constant by n. And so then we'll have plus one times 12, right? Our constant is one and our n is 12. So one times 12. And so if we simplify, this will be equal to 12 times 13 times 24, right? Two times 12 is 24 plus one, which would be 25 divided by six minus these twos will cancel out. So we'll just have 12 times 13 and then plus 12 for our last term. And so then if we simplify, this is equal to 650 minus 156 plus 12, right? This term will become 650 and 12 times 13 is 156 and then plus 12. And so then if we add those terms together, our sum here will be equal to 506. And so that would be the answer to this sum. Next, we have the summation from i equals four to 10 of i. And so before you go over to your summation formulas, notice what's different about this sum compared to our previous sums. This one starts at i equals four, not i equals one, like all of our formulas do, right? Notice that all of them start with i equals one. And so that means we're not gonna be able to use these formulas for our sum in its current state. And so how are we going to solve this sum in this case? Well, let's think about what we're summing here, right? We're starting with four and we're adding up the numbers up through 10, right? We're just plugging these values of i right into this i. And so this would be equal to four plus five plus six plus seven plus eight plus nine plus 10, right? And that would be the easiest way to figure out what this sum is equal to. But if you're told to solve this using your summation formulas, then you have a little bit of a tricky problem here. And so let's think about what's happening here. If we were to sum up the numbers from one to 10, we would have the same thing as this right here, but with a few extra numbers. And so let me write that out real quick. All right, and so then notice that for this sum from one to 10, that we have the same terms as this sum, except for these first three terms, right? So if we were to take this sum and then subtract out these three terms, right? If we were to eliminate one, two, and three, we would have the same sum here that we have over here. And so what we can do is we can take this sum from i equals one to 10 of i, which is this right here, and subtract the sum from i equals one to three for i, right? This sum right here from one to three would be one plus two plus three. And so if we sum all of the values from one to 10 and then subtract the sum of those first three, we'd be left with what we're trying to find. And so we can write this sum right here to be equal to this right here. And so if we clean up our work, we now have what this sum is equal to with sums that we are then able to use our summation formula for to solve. And so if we use this formula, let's start with our first sum right here. N is going to be equal to 10. And so this will be equal to 10 times 10 plus one divided by two. And then we're going to subtract the sum where N is equal to three for this formula. So we're gonna have three times three plus one divided by two. And so this will be equal to 10 times 11 divided by two minus three times four divided by two. And so that's equal to 110 divided by two minus 12 divided by two, which is equal to 55 minus six, which is equal to 49. And that would be the answer to this sum. And so if you were to add the numbers from four to 10 together, you would get 49. And so while that might've been easier to do with the original way of just adding each of those terms together, if you're asked to use these summation formulas, this is how you would do it. Not to mention that this is going to be a very useful technique to solving sums like this when you have a sum of terms that are going to be very difficult for you to add together manually. And so let's take a look at something like that for our last example for this video. All right, so for our last example, we have the summation for i equals five to 15 of two times i cubed. And so the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do here is pull out this two to the outside. And so let's do that. This will be equal 
to 2 times the summation from i equals 5 to 15 of i cubed. Right, and so now notice that we're starting at a value that isn't 1, just like we were in the last problem. So we have i equals 5 this time. And so in order to find this sum, we're going to have to rewrite this using that method we used before, where we subtracted out the terms that we don't need. And so in this case, this will be equal to 2 times the following. We're going to have the sum from i equals 1 to 15 of i to the third power, right? So we're going to sum all of the values from 1 to 15, and then we're going to subtract out the ones we don't want, right? So we only want to sum from 5 to 15, and so we're going to take out the values from 1 through 4. So that means we're going to subtract the sum from i equals 1 to 4 of i cubed, right? That's what we're doing here. We're finding the sum of all of those values from 1 to 15 so that this starts at 1 and we can use our formulas and then subtracting out the first four terms, which also starts with i equals 1, so we can still use our formula, and then we'll just be left with the terms that we actually want to know the sum of. And so now we can use our formula for the summation of i cubed right here for these two different values of n. And so this will be equal to 2 times 15 squared times 15 plus 1 squared divided by 4 minus, now n is equal to 4, so we're going to have 4 squared times 4 plus 1 squared divided by 4, and then we'll close that. And so now we can simplify. This will be equal to 2 times 225, that's 15 squared, times 16 squared, right, 15 plus 1 squared, so 16 squared is 256 divided by 4, and then minus 4 squared, which is 16 times 5 squared, which is 25 divided by 4. And so then we'll have that this is equal to 2 times 57,600 divided by 4, and then minus 16 times 25 is 400 divided by 4, and then we'll close that. And then we'll finish our work up here, and we'll have that this will be equal to 2 times 14,400 minus 100. This value divided by 4 is 14,400, and 400 divided by 4 is 100. And so that means we're going to have that this is equal to 2 times 14,300, and that will be equal to 28,600. And so that is the final answer to this sum. And so you can see that this one would be a lot harder to do manually, unlike our previous example where we just had the numbers from 4 through 10 to add. In this case, it would have been a lot more difficult to add up all the values from 5 to 15 of those values cubed and then multiplied by 2. And so this is a very nice way to find the answer to a sum like this where it doesn't start at 1. And so we were still able to use our summation formulas to find that answer. All right, so those are all the examples I had for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments below. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.